Laporta's messy admission, Bayern seal Champions League record, Chelsea have an eye on Aguero, Dortmund plan a Rigi bid and the transfer roundup all coming up in the next few minutes as I'm your host Mark Froelich, you are the one footballers and this is the Daily News. So first off, and yesterday, Juan Laporta was sworn in officially as Barcelona's new president. And of course, he took the opportunity to talk about, well, what everyone else is talking about. And that is extending the contract of Lionel Messi. He chose the opportunity to say to Messi that he loves him and that the club loves him and that he wants him to stay. And honestly, after such public adoration for him from the main man himself, I can kind of see Messi doing a U-turn of sorts and re-signing with the club. After all of this love, after all of these players um, that have also come out and said that they want him to stay after everything that's going on at Barcelona at the moment and they are slowly turning things around in quite a good patch I really can't see him leaving the club on top of this there are talks that Ronald Koeman will stay longer than the end of the season as well of course when all the presidential elections were going on there was words and rumors that Laporta if he were to come in were to bring Xavi in at the end of the season back from Qatar that Ronald Koeman wouldn't have much of a job for longer but like I said at the moment things are going sort of well they've got a Copa del Rey final to look forward to they're making some good ground on Atletico Madrid in La Liga obviously they got knocked out of the Champions League by PSG but if Messi were to decide to continue, there's a lot of positivity around the new presidency. I can kind of see why Koeman would want to stay and why the board would want to keep him at the moment. If they don't, they've obviously got to have a ready-made backup. And if it's not Xavi, I can't think of another manager who's ready-made to come in at the moment and take over at Barcelona. The only possible name I could think of would be someone like Julian Nagelsmann. But then again, he'd still be a little bit of a risk because he hasn't quite had the team at the level of Barcelona just yet. But moving on and to... Oh, I thought I didn't put the mic on. But moving on and to the Champions League last night, where Bayern Munich set a new record. It is now 19 appearances in the Champions League quarterfinals for the German champions, for the current Champions League holders, and you would have put it past them going even further. They won 2-1 against Lazio last night, but that wasn't really important because they won the first leg 4-1. It meant that they cruised through to the next round of the competition, and of course, those of you wondering when the draw for the quarterfinals will be, that'll be tomorrow. That is Friday afternoon, and we'll find out who's going to face off against who. It was also a pretty good night for Robert Lewandowski. He scored again, making it 13 out of 13 penalties in the Champions League. It meant since the start of last season, no strike has been involved in more goals. 25 from the Polish forward. That's 20 goals combined with five assists. Of course, Bayern Munich are going to go far in my opinion. Lewandowski is going to score a load more goals. And in fact, I made a whole video on why I think Bayern will win the Champions League, which you can find by clicking here. Elsewhere in the evening, and of course, Chelsea are through as well after what? To be honest, looked like a rather comfortable victory against Atletico Madrid. Not even just last night's performance, during which they won 2-0. Some good performances again from the likes of Kai Havertz and Timo Werner, who have had quite a slow start to life in West London. But also the away leg as well. Like, let's not forget Giroud's ridiculous bicycle kick. Yep, that was unbelievable. Um, so 3-0 on Agria against a notoriously tough to beat Diego Simeone and Atletico Madrid side doesn't exactly bode too well for them, especially as they're facing the pressure of being chased down in La Liga. Anyway, for Chelsea and of course for new manager Thomas Tuchel, the good times just keep rolling. It's another clean sheet, another victory, still unbeaten. The guy can do no wrong at the moment. I would have banked against Chelsea going all the way to the final and definitely securing a top four place in the Premier League. But moving on and actually talking of Chelsea, they are said to be one of the teams who are interested in signing Sergio Aguero. I know what you're thinking, Matt. Hold on. Isn't Sergio Aguero going to leave Manchester City and join Barcelona with his best friend Lionel Messi? Well, apparently not. Rumour has it that if he doesn't actually stay with Manchester City and sign a new deal, he does want to stay in the Premier League. Now, for me, this leaves only five other options after leaving Manchester City. And it's no disrespect to some of the teams that are in the top five and the top six. But traditionally, the rest of the top six are the ones who may have anywhere near the money to pay Aguero and the reputation of other players to try and attract him to the club. But for me, Chelsea's the only answer. So Aguero leaves Manchester City. He's not going to Manchester United. I think we all know that one. I think the last person to do that, or the other way around, was Carlos Tevez. I don't think after all these years at City that Sergio Aguero is going to United. I also don't think he's going to join Liverpool, another big rival of City in this day and age. And of course, someone directly directly trying to challenge for all these trophies alongside Manchester City. So it's those two out of the way. Tottenham and Arsenal may not even be in the Champions League. I'm not sure where they've got money to break the bank for Aguero's wage. And I don't really think he'd be interested in making a step down to those two clubs. So realistically, 
Again, no disrespect to the likes of Leicester and West Ham who are pushing the top four this season. Realistically, that only needs Chelsea. And the only way that I think they'd go for Aguero is if they don't get someone like Erling Haaland. And took you of Erling Haaland? It's like I wrote the script myself. This leads perfectly into our next story, and that is of Haaland's current club, Dortmund, having a plan in place should they lose him in the summer. And the plan is Divock Origi. The one reason this is a good plan is because Liverpool have dropped their asking price again. In January, they wanted around 20 million, but having seen that nobody wanted to pay that money for Origi, they've decided to lower it to around 12 million pounds. This fits in with Dortmund and their budget, and if you consider the fact that they're buying him because they've sold Haaland, the profit margins are ridiculous. They'd probably get 112 million for Haaland. So having a 100 million pound profit and still having a striker is pretty good. Of course, they're not getting quite the same striker. Personally, I don't think Dortmund are on the same level as Liverpool, but they're not quite far off. They're a big team in their country. They're challenging in the Champions League. Um, they're challenging for the title for the most part of most seasons, maybe not so much this season. So Dortmund have seen that Origi has, firstly, not played much football because he's played back up to the likes of Salah, Mane and Firmino. But when he has come in, hasn't really done the business. Like, yeah, he scored the odd important goal here and there, but he's not exactly been a reliable backup when it comes to one of the big guys being out, he's able to come in. So why would Dortmund want him? In my eyes, he's not good enough for Liverpool, and I'm not sure he's good enough for Dortmund either, even though, obviously, as we said, with 12 million, it's quite a good deal. I'm not sure this would represent the best piece of business if they were to lose Haaland. I think they need more of a competent goal scorer. So next up, and we come to a quick round up of the rest of the day's news that you might have missed, and talking of transfer prices being lowered, apparently Sevilla have slashed their asking price for Jules Koundé from 70 million to 50 million euros. Elsewhere, a new Inter Miami coach, Phil Neville, is hoping to bring former England international Kieran Gibbs to the club and in a bit of footballing news from last night Kylian Mbappe came off the bench to score two goals as PSG beat Lille in the French Cup and in the championship in the race to reach the Premier League Norwich are back at it again they are now 10 points clear after winning a club record ninth game in a row so that's all for me then make sure you check out everything else we've got going on in on one football and until next time I'll see you guys later